So um, tonight we're going to talk about love. First of all, the love that Christ has for us, the love that He has for us in which He gave His own life for our sins, being the perfect Lamb of God. Just going to turn the mic here. Please. <laughs> So, as I was saying, um, tonight we're going to talk about love. First, about the love that Christ has for us, and uh, He being the perfect Lamb of God, gave His own life for us and shed His own blood for us. Nobody took His life from Him, but He gave He gave His own life for us. And uh, but tonight we're going to focus on the love that we are to have for Him. Uh, let's uh, start with the word of prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day, for this beautiful Sunday we have, Lord. Thank you for the privilege, Lord, that we have to be gathered here in your name, to learn more about you, Lord, to sing and worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. Lord, we also pray for our pastor and uh, the teenagers who are going down to your camp, Lord, that keep them safe as they go, uh, as they travel, Lord, that um, they might get closer to you down there, Lord. They might have fellowship, Lord, and uh, fun with the others, Lord, and that all of them might, might come back to you, Lord. Father, I also pray for our Brother Wally and uh, Andrew and uh, the other uh, young kids, Lord, that you might bring them, I take them to the place they're going, Lord, safely, and that you bless their fishing, their camping, Lord, and that you bring them back here safely, Lord. Father, uh, please uh, talk to our hearts tonight. Um, please use me tonight, Lord, to speak not my words, not Lord, but the words you have me uh, saying, Lord, for your glory and honor, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so let's please turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 19. Matthew, Matthew 19, starting from verse 16. Matthew 19, starting from verse 16 down to verse 24. And behold, one came and said to him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto me, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou who enter into eternal into life, keep the commandments. He said unto me, Which? And Jesus said, Thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What left I have? Jesus said unto me, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So, uh, here we have Jesus uh, at the costs of Judea, being followed by multitudes, and, and uh, this young man comes to him and approaches him. And he asks him uh, what he has to do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus first tells him to uh, keep the commandments and uh, this young man tells him that he's been doing that from his youth and asks what he lacks yet. Jesus tells him to sell all his assets to give the money to the poor and to come and follow him. And uh, before we dive into this passage, just a few things. 
uh, we can find the same passage in the book of Mark, chapter 10, uh, verses 17 to 24. So Mark chapter 10, 17 through 24. And uh, also in the book of Luke, chapter 18, verses 18 through 27. Uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 18 to 27. This young man, uh, as the text says, he is a keeper of the law and probably a Jew. And uh, he is also uh, rich and a ruler. We can see that in the book of uh, Mark. So the Bible tells us in the book of Mark that uh, when this guy comes to Jesus, he kneels down and to, to speak to Jesus. He comes running and kneels down to speak to Jesus. So there we can see that he has uh, respect for Jesus because he comes running and he kneels down and he says, Jesus, Master, uh, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And uh, we can see from our text that he knows that he lacks something. That by just uh, following the commandments, he still lacks something. And that thing that he lacks is Jesus. Uh, this teaches us something very important. We can be here at church, we can be singing, we can be praying, we can be smiling, but uh, if we don't have Jesus in our hearts, it's all pain. It doesn't matter. It's all pain. Uh, so, back to our test. This man, he knows that he's lacking something, but he doesn't know what it is. And the Bible tells us in the book of Mark that Jesus, looking at him, loved him. So, Jesus uh, tells him that he likes one thing, and uh, that it is to sell all his belongings and give it to the poor, and that was too hard for him to do, because that young man, he loved his wealth. And he loved his wealth more than he loved Jesus. So he went away sorrowful. And uh, let us meditate on a few things, three things from our text. And uh, the first thing that we can read from our text, let's just read verse 21 again. Jesus said unto me, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give the money to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. So, from this verse, we can know, we can see and know that Jesus, what he wants from us is not our money, but he wants our heart. Our heart. Uh, Christ tells the young man to sell all his belongings and to give the money to the poor and come and follow him. And what is interesting about this passage is that Christ doesn't tell him to uh, sell all his belongings and give the money back to Christ to use in the ministry. He doesn't want his money, he wants his heart. And that's what he wants from us. It doesn't matter if we are rich or poor, he wants our hearts completely. Um, let's uh, hold our, our places here and go to the book of Luke. Chapter 21, uh, verses 1 to 4. Luke chapter 21, verses 1 to 4. So, uh, Luke 21, starting from verse 1. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts unto the treasure. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in either two mites. And he said, Of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast it into 
the offerings of God. But she of her penury hath cast in all the living that she had left. So this is, a, is, an interesting, is a, an interesting passage because we see all these rich men giving of their abundance to God and this widow, she gives all she has, which is not much by the way, but she gives everything she has. And um, this woman is the perfect example of sowing in tears and living in joy because she was a widow and back then widows if they didn't have sons to provide for them, they wouldn't have anything or anybody to provide for them. So the, the Bible doesn't tell us if she had sons or not, but it tells it does tell us that all the, the resources she had, she offered them to God. And uh, as I was saying, this is the perfect example of sowing in tears and reaping in joy. I believe that uh, God uh, blessed her greatly because of that faithful act of her. The natural man usually assumes that the church is a scheme to take uh, people's money. You know, they, they cannot understand why we give offerings to God and why we give back the tithes to God. And uh, in fact, the Word of God uh, tells us and shows us that the natural man cannot understand the things of God. I'm just going to read here uh, 1 Corinthians 2.14, we don't need to go there. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So, the natural man, they cannot understand why um, we give back to God the tithe and we offer the offerings to God because to them uh, you need money, you need assets to be happy and uh, they cannot understand why why uh, giving uh, resources, giving back to God money how can we be happy with them? and it's really sad how some people they come so close to knowing God and to receiving Jesus as their Savior but uh, because they might believe that the church is a scheme, they just back down and they just don't do it. Uh, I have a small story to tell. When I was working in Brazil like five years ago, uh, all my, my co-workers from the same team, there was probably six or seven of us, and uh, I was the only believer there. And uh, we were talking about God and faith and the beliefs we have. And uh, my boss, he asked me this question. If God is all-powerful, why does he need your money? And that is a good question. That is a good question. And uh, some people that don't know God, they know just a little bit enough to make up these kind of questions so that uh, that knowledge just pushes them away from God. And uh, to be honest, I don't remember what I answered to him. That's just a question stuck in my brain. But um, God doesn't want, as I was talking about, God doesn't want our money. He wants our heart. And He wants us to depend on Him. So when we give back to God the offers and, the, and the, the tithes, we are showing our trust to Him and we are laying treasures up in heaven for ourselves. And uh, my second point about our text tonight is that we shouldn't be discouraged when we witness to somebody and they reject Christ. Uh, this text shows us that this rich young ruler, he came to Christ and uh, as we read, he had respect for Christ, but he didn't love Christ. And uh, we see that sometimes we witness to our friends, to our family members, and um, they don't seem to listen. You know, it, it is hard for them to understand and to listen. And sometimes you have to witness them many times and, and nothing. I have some loved ones of my own. Uh, my own father is not a believer. And I have witnessed to him. And, uh, and all, every time I try to witness to him, he just tried to change the subject, to talk about something else. And um, we see in here that this passage, this young man, he rejected Christ himself. So, if somebody 
uh, rejects even Christ, how much more they, they're going to reject us witnessing to, to them. Uh, but we should, we should uh, have patience and um, love them and have patience because sometimes it takes time. You know? uh, the Bible doesn't tell us if this young man came to Christ afterwards. He might have uh, came to Christ, we don't know. But um, we should never be discouraged when we witness to somebody and they don't, and they don't receive Christ right away. Because we were all once like that one day too, right? Some, somebody witnessed to me when I was younger and I'm sure that somebody witnessed to you as well. And uh, I'm pretty sure it took time for you to receive, the, receive Christ in your heart and um, to really listen what they had to say to you. Uh, the third point that I have here uh, about our text is that following Christ is a hard thing. We all know that. Uh, many people, they do serve and follow Christ until it, it is convenient, until it is, uh, there's no sacrifice, no loss, no pain. And uh, this is the case of this young man from our text. You know, uh, he said to Christ that he was following, he was keeping the commandments, and we're going to see in just a moment that he wasn't really following all the commandments because he was broken one of them, but we're going to see that in just a moment. Uh, but uh, he obeyed God until it was convenient for him. You know, keeping the other commandments wasn't something that was complicated to him. But when Christ asked him to give up on his money, on his wealth, the things that he loved, he backed down. And uh, sometimes we are like that too. Christ wants our hearts, He wants us completely. And uh, I know that I have things that I need to surrender to Him. And uh, those things I struggle with. And I'm pretty sure that everybody here also has something that they um, struggle to surrender to Christ. Um, uh, the Bible also tells us in the book of 1st Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 I'm just going to read it here we don't need to go there for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows it's 1st Timothy 6 10 um, so this verse right here is kind of uh, explaining what is going on in this passage that we see with Christ. This young man, he loved his money, and the Bible tells us that the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not wrong for us to have money and to have things, but if we love the thing, if we love that money, those, uh, that wealth, we are in trouble, because we're going to love that money more than we love Christ. And we're going to bring some uh, bad things for ourselves. The Bible tells us in 1st Timothy 6 10 that they have error from the faith, which is they just go astray from God and uh, pierce themselves through with many sorrows. So, those who love money, they are just bringing them, themselves sorrow and pain, which is the case exactly with this young man. This young man uh, simply couldn't obey. Christ, because as I said, his love for his wealth was greater than his love for Christ. Uh, let us just analyze this for a moment. Let's just read verses 20 through 22 again. And I'm going to just go back here. So verses 20 through 22 again. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give it to the poor, the poor, and thou shalt have a treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard this that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So, 
in here we can see that what Jesus is asking him is not something new. It's just for him to fulfill the commandments. And uh, if we go back to the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and then you can turn with me there, please. We're going to see that he was actually breaking one commandment. And we're going to read uh, verses 3 and 5 from the book of Exodus. Chapter 20. So, verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So, when we read this, we can understand that this young man, he had a broken this commandment by loving his money. He, he was being a, an idolater. He was idolizing his money, and uh, turns out that his money, his wealth, was his God, was not God. So, when we understand that, we know that, we can see that he was breaking the commandments. He was not following the commandments as he should be. And Christ, by looking at him, he understood that. And he asked him to give up his money so that his heart would be with God and that he would be obeying the commandments, commandments as he should be. So when we talk about the sin of idolatry, uh, usually we think about people worshipping idols and images and that kind of stuff that happened a lot in the past, uh, in the times of the, the Old Testament, and also happens today with other uh, religions, we know that. But there's also something else. The sin of idolatry doesn't, uh, it's not only that. When we have something that we love more than we love Christ, we are idolizing that thing. And uh, the, our main text shows us that this young man was idolizing, idolizing his wealth. So, in fact, he was breaking the, the commandment that we just read. Thou shalt not have other gods before me. Uh, let's read verse 5, same chapter. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children and to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So here we see that God, our God, is a jealous God. He wants our undivided attention. He doesn't want to divide our attention with something else. And uh, when we love something else more than we love God or when we love somebody else more than we love God, that thing or that person becomes God. Again, by not obeying what Christ told him to do, this young man was breaking one of the Ten Commandments. And we know that when you break one of the commandments, you break them all. So Jesus knew what was going on in this man's heart. He knew that he needed to surrender this specific area of his life. And that's why he asked him to sell all his assets, all his belongings, and to give the money to the poor, and uh, the book of Mark also tells us that um, when Jesus is telling him, him that, he says, Take up your cross and follow me. So that is what taking up our cross means. We need to surrender, especially the things that we don't want to, to surrender to God. And uh, the point is that all of us, as I was saying earlier, have something that we don't want to uh, surrender to God. And as Christians, sooner or later, we're going to find ourselves in the same uh, spot this young man was. You know, God is, on, is going is to require of us to surrender something that we don't want to surrender. And uh, we're going to find ourselves in the same place. But hopefully, let us uh, learn from his example and uh, just surrender whatever it is that God wants us to surrender. Uh, he wants us completely. As I was saying, uh, the same event in the book of Mark, chapter 10, 21, Jesus tells this young man to take up his cross and follow him. 
And uh, if we love Christ, we will obey His commandments. We will give Him uh, our hearts, ourselves completely, and there will be sacrifices. As the young ruler, we might be serving God until it is convenient for us, until it is easy, you know. We might be coming to church on Sunday evenings and singing and uh, praying, but our, heart might, our hearts might not be in the right place with God. And uh, whatever it is that He wants you and me to surrender, we should surrender to Him because when we, do not, when we do not do that, we do not please God. He wants us to be more Christ-like, in such a way that we can shine His light in this world of darkness, so that other can see, others can see the changes in us, and that can become a testimony to the others. So let's just imagine for a second if this uh, young man had obeyed Christ, if he had done that, others would see the change in his life. Others would know that when he met Christ, something in him changed. And uh, that would have been a testimony to others. They would have known that this young man, this young Jew, who used to love his money, love his wealth, gave himself completely to Christ and changed him for Christ, for Christ's sake. Um, I'm just going to read here Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 we're going to have to turn with me there uh, so the word of God says let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so this is what I'm saying here if this young man had obeyed Christ, had done what Christ had told him to do, it would have been a testimony to others. You know, this, this guy is different. He's met Christ, he's known Christ, and he's not the guy that loved his money as he used to be. He's not that guy anymore. Um, next, let's all go to the book of Matthew, chapter 10. Verse 39. Matthew chapter 10, verse 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that shall lose his, his life for my sake shall find him. So Christ is saying here that uh, when we live for ourselves, when we don't want to live for Christ, we are actually losing our lives. And uh, not only the life to come, but also this life we're just wasting. Time and, um, and this life that we have here. But when we lose our lives for His sake, when we lose our lives for His sake, we are actually gaining life. So, um, I have to be uh, more accurate. He that loses his life for my sake shall find it. So, when we have sacrifices for God, even the small ones, we're we are actually sorry, I just lost my question. We're actually uh, laying up treasures for ourselves in heaven. So the natural man cannot un understand that. He cannot understand um, that when we live for ourselves, we are actually wasting this life and the life, the next life to come, because those who have not Christ. They are going to hell, and you know that. Um, let us go back to our main text. In Matthew chapter 20... Uh, Matthew chapter... 19. Huh? 19. 
90 again, sorry. <laughs> and verses 20, 23 to 26. Matthew 19, 20, 23 through 26. Sorry. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So this is a very powerful and also graphic uh, passage that we have. And uh, what Jesus is saying here is not saying that it's impossible for those who have wealth to enter into heaven, but he's saying that it's hard for them to go. And it really is. Um, as long as they don't love their resources, their wealth, they are fine. In fact, we have many examples in the Bible, like men such as Job and Abraham, David and Solomon and so forth. They, all, they were all rich men. But the difference between this man and the young ruler that we see in our text is that they didn't love their money. They loved God more than they loved their, their money. Uh, please turn with me in the book of John, chapter 3. John chapter 3, starting from verse 26. John chapter 3, starting from verse 26 through 30. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizer, and all men come to him. And John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear witness. Sorry, uh, verse twenty-eight. Ye yourselves bear witness that I said I am not Christ, but I am, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of his bride, bridegroom's words. This is my joy, therefore. This my joy. Therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. So, in this passage, we see that the disciples come to John the Baptist, and they are saying, uh, John, Christ, the one that he baptized a uh, while earlier, uh, people are coming to him to be baptized now. And uh, what are your thoughts about that? What are you going to do about that? And his answer is just, it just amazes me. He says. He shall increase, but I must decrease. And I think, I believe that this is the, the key for us to surrender whatever it is that we don't want to surrender to God. This is the key for us to do it. You know, Christ needs to increase and we must decrease. Um, in our main text, Matthew chapter 19, this young man, he wasn't uh, willing to obey God because he was too full of himself. He didn't have Christ in his heart. And um, whatever it is that uh, we need to surrender to God, we need to remember that He must increase in ourselves. We ourselves must to decrease. As the Apostle Paul says in the book of Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So, we need to remember, we need to um, have this, this verse, this truth in our hearts, that we are crucified with Christ. All the things that we have in this world, all the things that uh, might give us joy or 
might give us uh, pleasure, they are not, they are not where our love is supposed to be. Our love, our attention, our focus should be on Christ. And um, as the Apostle Paul says, he is crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he lives. But um, he also says that Christ lives in him. So we should let Christ live through us. Uh, this passage, if you go back to um, John chapter 3, verse 30, He must increase, but I must decrease. So, whatever it is that Christ is asking you to surrender to Him, you might be um, something that you are doing and you should not be doing, or something that He is asking you to do and you are not doing. It might even be some... Um, companies that you have and you should not be around those people we should we should um, give our hearts to God and uh, in fact if we love him we ought to live for him as the young ruler you and I have might have something as I was saying that we need to surrender to Christ and uh, And uh, as we read here in the, in the book of John, John the Baptist says, He must increase, but I must decrease. This verse is, is a short verse, but it's such a, a great verse. And uh, if we pay attention to this verse, the order of things, that is also an important thing that we should pay attention to, I think. First he says, He must increase, but I must decrease. So the first thing that needs to take place is Christ increasing, not um, our decrease. And uh, that meaning that when we try to obey God in our own flesh by ourselves, we are going to fail, that's guaranteed. But if we draw closer to Christ, if we let Him increase in our lives, in our hearts, then we can surrender to Him whatever it is that we are having trouble to surrender to Him. Not by our own will, not by our own strength, but by His strength. Let's go back to the book of Matthew again, uh, chapter 19. We are going to read verses 25 and 26 again. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazing, amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So that's what I'm saying about uh, the book of John, John chapter 3, 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. And if we try to decrease ourselves, if we try to empty ourselves in our own strength, we are going to fail. And as Christ says, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So what I'm trying to uh, explain here is that if we draw closer to Him and uh, let Christ increase in our lives, then we can surrender, then we can empty of ourselves. And uh, going back to uh, the main point here, if we love Christ, we will demonstrate it somehow. Love requires sacrifice. You know, sometimes we are willing to sacrifice things for friends or a family member or your spouse, maybe. But when it comes to make sacrifices for Christ, sometimes we are not uh, willing as much. And... Um, if we truly love Christ, we're going to make sacrifices for Him. And I'm not necessarily saying about, talking about dying for Him, but maybe starting from small sacrifices. Sometimes we don't feel like coming to church. Sometimes we can help out somebody, but they don't feel like it. But that is a 
small sacrifice we are to do for Christ. And um, even to do FBI, you know, um, it's been really amazing to me to go there and uh, to learn more about God. And it is a small sacrifice that we can make because if you work from Monday to Friday and uh, regular hours, you're going to be tired after work and, and uh, you might be thinking, no, I don't, I'm too tired to go to, to FBI and uh, to study, I don't want to do it. But it's a small sacrifice that we could do for Christ. Uh, and uh, to finish tonight, let's go to the book of John, verse, uh, chapter 21. This is our last passage of tonight. John, chapter 21, starting from verse 15. John 21, 15 through 19. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou more than this? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of, jo son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither uh, thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me. So this passage is very interesting, and uh, we can make a parallel to the passage in which um, Peter denies Christ, three times, and here he has the chance to confirm to Christ three times that he loves him. And uh, another interesting thing is that Christ asks him to feed his sheep or his lambs. And um, it's almost like Christ is saying to him here, if you love me, you need to demonstrate it by actions, not by just words. And we know that worshiping God isn't an important part of our lives as Christians. But if we truly love Christ, we need to show this by taking actions as well. And Jesus is asking him, feed my sheep, feed my lamb. You know, when, um, when I was studying for this, for this sermon, two weeks ago when I started to prepare this, I stumbled over this passage, uh, John chapter 21. This was the first passage that I uh, studied to uh, prepare this sermon. And um, I was kind of doing things half-hearted. I was kind of lukewarm and um, I wasn't really listening to what the things that God uh, was saying to me. And uh, I was kind of going through the motions. And uh, I have to be honest, when I read this passage, was almost like Christ was talking to me. Do you love me? And um, that was a kind of a wake up call to me because I I noticed that I wasn't I was doing things half hearted and um, and that, that reminded me of a specific thing that Christ asked me to do and I didn't do that thing. And that really made me sad because I had a chance to show his love for me. Uh, by obeying him and witnessing to somebody else, and I didn't do that. So let us all remember that if we love Christ, we need to demonstrate it. It's not enough to say, to pray and to say, God, I love you. 
uh, that is a good thing that we should be doing, but that's not enough in and of itself. We should show our love to him by taking action. So, I am really glad the pastor asked me tonight to preach because I started studying this passage and um, sometimes we get so caught up with this secular life that when Christ is talking to us, we don't listen. We don't listen at all. And uh, then we pray more and then we try talking more with God and we try talking louder or we try preach, uh, praying more and then uh, we still don't listen. We still are not able to listen to His voice to us. But I was really glad because when I opened up in this passage, God spoke to me. God has spoken to me. And uh, I really hope that He's spoken to you as well. So, just to wrap up, we see that in our main text, what Christ wanted from this uh, young man was for him to sell his assets, take up his cross and follow him. For Peter, Christ had for him to uh, feed his lambs, to become pastor of the, the church after his depart. But he's also for you and for me to do. And uh, you might already know what that thing is. And um, you should ask yourself tonight, do I love Jesus? Is my heart in the right place? Am I doing what He wants me to do? And the answer is, if we really love Him, as I was saying before, we should show it not by actions, not by words only, but by actions. So, ask yourself, do I love Him? Do I love Jesus? Let's pray.